Hello, good evening. What a wonderful day it's been. I had Jeffrey here today with me all day. And uh, and it was wonderful. We had a glorious, wonderful day. He helped me out in my craft room a little bit. We're um, changing it around a little bit because he's going to be using that room too. Um, this here room I'm in is my sewing room. But... Um, Jeffrey's going to be using my craft room as his school room on the days that his mom works. So he doesn't have to sit home alone. He could probably sit home alone to, while mom worked during the day, but um, yeah, no, he'll stay here with me and Papa so that he's not alone and then he needs a place that it's quiet for him to do his do his schoolwork so that's good yes he's homeschooling for the rest of the year or it's virtual schooling so and he's switching from the brick and mortar school to go to the virtual school which is still the same teacher same class schedule everything's the same except he's doing it from home and on the computer and so and so far he's been doing that for two weeks and it is working out beautiful and and so I am now that I've got some time I'm going to I should have brought that in here I'll go get it in a minute but I started this morning I started one of these projects and I um I started one of these projects and uh, I had like a little house over here and trees here and flowers and clouds okay this time I'm gonna do I want to I'm gonna and I finished that one so now I'll go get it in a minute and show you well hang on a second let me just run and get it. okay so just so you know a little bit about what I'm here, I'm doing it the same size here, 10 inches by 6 inches, because I cover it with this 6 inch tool. Alright, now, let's see here, this is the one I started this morning, if you watch the video, and I have it, you can, well, I have it completely, the whole thing covered in tool and then just borrow stitched, slow stitched. So she goes stitching, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just all, some people call it long stitching, but it's just a stitch. And I went around and around until I got to the middle. Dun, 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 until I got to the middle. Which in my middle then, my middle was kind of puckered. And so you can see the pucker there. I kind of like that look that little puck well anyway so now that's going to get stitched to my blanket tonight after I sit in my lazy chair so I want to make a frog so I've got some fabrics here well first of all I want to make I want my frog to be kind of sitting I got a picture I'm kind of looking at here on my computer there he is okay he's sitting on a rock but I want him to sort of be I'm going to make I want him to sort of be sitting on a mushroom so if this is my mushroom and then I don't know here this is this is mine so I don't have to worry about anything perfection okay this looks like a mushroom maybe I don't want it that humpy maybe I don't want it that humpy maybe I'm gonna de-hump it a little bit like this it's a little bit more de-humped okay that's my mushroom okay it's frog maybe we'll call it a toadstool 
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make, I've got this green here and I have this green here. So I'm going to, I'm going to first, let's see, we're going to make his, his belly. Okay. I think this is going to be like his belly, I think. Hmm. But let me see. I want to have... Let me see how I'll do this. Um... Let us see how this is going to work. I know it's going to be a beautiful frog. I know it's going to be a beautiful frog. Okay, how about that? There. Now. Now. Then this would be his, like his little arms. Let me see now. This is going to be not your normal frog. This frog here is very rare. It's a very rare frog. Not a frog that you would see. Um, it's like magical. This frog, frog is not one that you would just see in like, like the, um, in nature unless you're in a very special place. And they do kind of hide. Let me see here. Let's see what we can do here. I'm cutting these two pieces out together so that... Okay, now put them together so that they are identical because he wants his feet to match. Okay. So while he's sitting on his little toadstool. Okay, there we go, like this. Let's put them in sort of inward like this. Now, okay, now, then. That's sort of his little, but then he needs knees to come out this way. But I, I don't want him to blend completely in, so I'm going to make his knees. Let me see how we'll do this now. Um... Okay, I have to, let me see how I'll do this. We need knees. Okay, what if I go like this, so I get his knees the same. So they matching, like matching knees. I don't know if this will work. Let me see. Let's see if this is going to look like knees. I like this um, batik that I put on the back because it kind of looks like he's in the night. And um, he's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of like a night thing. Okay, so that does, it does look like a knee. It does look like a knee, okay. It does look like a knee. Oh, yay! Okay, but he needs feet back here, too. So his feet, let me do this way on the feet. So, I mean, this is a special frog. Now, it's, he's very special. He, um, yeah, he's very special. Just take my word for it. Okay, let's see. How will we do this? I'm going to do this way and this way. And then again, he needs three toes. And, and I want little bobbles on the end of his toes too. But that I'll do afterward because 
I'll do them with a with a um, French knot. Okay, did I get that cut all the way through here? Yeah. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, so then we'll put that under here so he's got his little back feet. Hee <laughs> hee! I like him already. Okay, so there. Put his hand back there. There. So there his like his his knees and his little feet. His little twitsies. And like I say, once I get this done and it's completely stitched on like this is stitched, then I'll use, like here I put French knot here in this flower and then I did stitching on the outside. Well, that's what I'll do here too. I will give him little bobbles on his toes. Okay, now he needs to have like a little head so that he can have little eyes because he needs little eyes on his little head okay so let's see how we'll do this um <laughs> this is gonna be beautiful okay so we're gonna i want it sort of like a oval well not a dump oval well well it's kind of a round that's good that's good that's good now see there's his little head now how do i want to do his eyes i think maybe i'll get his eyes his backgrounds of his eyes let me see i think <laughs> look i get a picture of a frog on the computer <laughs> so hopefully i'm in frame here and I can't see myself, which I don't need to see myself. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Like this. And that's his eyes up there on his head. Okay. Now, we want, do I have a piece of white fabric here in this stack of beautimous things? Let me see. Well, this isn't exactly why it's got some yaller in it, too, but it's okay. I'm going to, um, okay, I want to get them the same, too. So I'm going to take a piece of that. And I'm going to make two perfectly round, perfectly round spots. Ooh, I hope this is the right size. <laughs> He's got eyes with little yellow lines in them. Right there. But then I need little black. Oh, maybe we could use... I think I do have some black. Or I wonder if he wants... If he, if his, I'm not sure of his heritage, what color maybe his eyes should be, but I think, ooh, maybe we want them to be like, I wonder if I want them to be purple eyes. I'm, I got this thing for purple, and I got purple fabric right here. So, so then I'm wondering if I want to just... Because now these have to be smaller than the whites of his eyes. Let's see. I am loving this slow stitching. I tell you what, it's the truth. So let's put this here. And then this one here. And then... He needs just a little sparkle in his eyes. Let me see. I got this little scrap of fabric here. 
Let me just get some of the white out of that. And look at there. I'm just going to get a little sparkle. Just a little, just a little sparkle. Let's put that up there in that little sparkle area. And this one right here. No, I gotta make this one a little bit bigger. And um, little sparkle. There, now that's good. No, I'm going to change this one. Because if that one's a triangle, then this one needs to be a triangle. Can't have anything off kilter. Well, it's going to be off kilter. There we go. Beautiful eyes. Okay. Now, he needs a beautiful smile. Let me see. He's going to have... Yeah. Let's see. Yes! Look at that. Cheek to cheek smile. Now. You know what? Do I have any pink? Let's see if I have a little spot of pink. Oh, that's... I gotta sew that on tonight, too. Put that there. Okay. And... This is kind of pink. Yeah, this is good. I want just a little tiny-weensy piece of pink. And I'm going to... Because I need to make him some rosy cheeks. Yes, frogs need rosy cheeks. Okay, so let us put his rosy cheeks like here. Oh, that's upside down. Well, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Like this. Then I think. I think that's good. I think that's a beautiful frog. I think that's a beautiful frog. And he does look like a frog. Now, it's night time. So, you know, uh, this is just like in the night. And the moon is shining on him. And, um, let's see. Do we want... You know what I do? What I'll do is I'm going to put some, um... After I got it slow stitched, I will put on some French knots to make him some freckles right here. And maybe I'll make him some buttons. Yeah, I should even make him like a little necktie. I wonder if he wants a, like a little necktie. I, it's hard to know what a frog wants without knowing for sure what a frog likes. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can... No, that's not going to look like a necktie. Wait a minute here. We have to go like... Here's some denim. Let me see how this works. Okay. Yeah. That's like a necktie. Okay, he's going to have a necktie because he's going to be a very nice, well-dressed. <laughs> he's going to be a real nice, well-dressed frog. So he's got a little necktie. Okay, and then he's going to have... Okay, he's going to have... Let's see, what is he going to have? He's going to have... Oh, clouds in the sky, clouds in the sky. Get this stuff out again. And I'm going to make this a little thicker than the clouds I made this morning. 
because the clouds on my other piece really do not show up all that much. So I'm going to this one do it still might not show up real much but it'll be nice nonetheless. Okay. And I wonder if I should have a moon. There, he's got clouds. Then I think I should have a moon. Now. Oh, wait a minute. That's too small. Okay, let's see about this. Put the moon up there. Should we have the moon behind the clouds? Yeah. Let's put them in. Be put that moon in between those two layers of batting. Okay. Now, let's separate. Oh yeah, I have to separate his eyes just a little bit here. That's better. Just smile down here. Now. Now he's going to need, you know what, I wonder if I can, if there's any possible way that I can make a dragon fly. Let me see. I don't know if I can or not. So if I go like this, yeah, that's the dragonfly. And let's put him, let's put him right there, the dragonfly. And then he needs a little body. What color should we make his little body? We need a dragonfly body. Um. Um, ba dee da, um, ba doo, we need a yeah. Here, now, this is red. Okay. And so, but we gotta make, I'm gonna fold that in half. I should have got me a white bigger piece. This will do though. This will be fine. This will be fine. So, the dragon, dragonfly's tail is kind of pointy. And then it comes up here, and then we need a dragonfly head. And then let's see. Will this work? Ah, oh, yes! And on this too, on the dragonfly, I can um, come up with a, if with a, let me get this out of the way. Okay, now. So, I got this. Should the moon be a little bigger? Now I'm thinking the moon needs to be a little bit bigger. Oh, no. I just don't know. You never, never know until you try it. And I got plenty of fabric, so. There. Oh, yeah. We want a big moon. Big moon. I love it when there's a big moon out. There we go. There. Now. Then I need... Oh, I still have this... This grassy stuff. I love this stuff. Okay. I'll probably get all... I love this so much, I'll probably get it all used up before you know it. Okay. And so we're going to get the grassy stuff. And we're just going to, let's see how I can do this. We're just going to go like this way. And pull that. Get that down here at the bottom. So there's grassy stuff at the bottom. Look at that. It 
it's a frog. Okay, now I'm going to... I wonder if I want... I got different colors of this tool, but I think I'm going to stick with this color. Okay, so... Now I'm going to cover the whole thing. As you can see, there's no stitching, no glue, no nothing. Just my layered fabric. And then I'm going to put this tool over the top like this. I make it a little bit longer than the 10 inches. And then with my straight pins, I'm going to show it where I want it to stay. Okay, I haven't cleaned up my mess since this morning. And I had my straight pins right here. I had them right here. What did I do with them? What did I do with them? They have to be right here still. Good grief, Elizabeth Murray. Now, um, okay, just, oh, there they are, there they are, there they are. I knew they had to be here somewhere. I threw the yarn ball on top of them. Okay, so now I've got that tool over the top. So I'm going to go put some pins. And get me some pins pins and I'm going to put to hold these pieces kind of so they don't go shifting around I don't want them to go shifting around I once made an art piece I made a shifty eyed owl but it was all made out of um it was all made out of metal pieces and um I glued them onto something I was a board I think and he was a shifty eyed owl I still have him here somewhere and um, I called him a shifty eye at all because I used tele a lot of um, old, an old typewriter pieces. And the little shift, the little round shift knobs on either side turned out to be his eyes. So I called him my shifty eye owl. So now see, I'm just making sure that all the little pieces in here have got just a little bit of a pin and um, that way these small pieces will stay where I put them hopefully or pretty close to where I put them I love this little necktie I'll give them a tie tack too when it's when it's all said and done oh this will be fun to do So you can do anything. You can make you a train, or make you a boat, or make you a hobby horse. Yeah, there's quite a few pieces on here, so I want to make sure I have them all kind of pinned down. And the, um, the tool is going to hold everything to be where it belongs. And let's see, I got the grass there, the necktie, his, oh, no, his hands aren't pinned. His little hands are not pinned good enough. So we'll get them out. And as I go around, I'm, I'm probably, well, I will go the same on this one as I did the other one and just keep going around until I get to the middle. And it might pucker up in the middle again, but that's part of the art of it. I love my little dragonfly. Okay, does that look like I, I think I have everything. Everything seems to be... Mushroom doesn't really look like a mushroom, but we know it's a mushroom. And I think that this is just fantastical. I love it. Let me put one more pin right here. Just to be there. Just to be there. And so... And I think I'm going to use to, um, to fix him up, I think I'm going to use this yellow. It's like a variegated yellow in this thread here. Because then it'll be like moonbeams, moonbeams coming down in Mr. Frog. Mr. Freddy the Frog. Are you Freddy the Frog? I guess so. I think so. 
he didn't say not. He didn't say he didn't want Freddy the Frog. So he's going to be Freddy the Frog. And so then, let me see, underneath here somewhere, I have my needles hiding. Oh, where'd I put them? They were just here. Just he Oh, here they are. Oh, no, those are both big fat ones. I'm not real crazy about these great big fat ones. Let me look in here. Let me see. These are actually sashiko needles right here. And I ordered them from uh, Avon. Not Avon. Avon doesn't have needles. Good grief, Elizabeth. Um, Amazon. And they call these sashiko needles. And I think they might all be of the same width or roundness, but they're different lengths. Now, let me see. I think... Let me kind of look at them. Yeah, I'm going to get this little one. Okay, and I don't know if it's... I don't know if those are just good ones. Yeah, I think this is going to be nice. A nice length. And it doesn't look too fat. Because now, if I... If my needle is too fat, when we're going through um, a few thicknesses, then it's kind of hard to get it through the, th the few set thicknesses. So let's see. There, got it. And let me look at them needles again. I want to see something. <sighs> Let me see if they're... No, they look like they're all the same thicknesses. They look like they're all the same um, thickness. Like some needles, like this one here. In fact, I think this, these, both of these, I think are darning needles. tapestry I don't I don't know I'm not as smart as some when it comes to these are two different needles because the eyes are different sizes they're different but they're fat okay I don't want them fat ones okay I want this one is thinner but it's still I can get my heavier thread through the um through the through, through the eye with no trouble so then I'm going to just again do like I did, do like I did on the other one, and I'm just going to do the running stitch. See how this one I used a variegated blue on this one, and I just did the running stitch. There's so many names for this. This It can be the sashiko stitch, it can be a boro stitch, it can be a, a running stitch, long stitch, Gosh, and there's probably even more names for it. But it can be so many different stitches. But this is the main stitch that we use in slow stitching. The main stitch is this running um, long stitch. The um, um, Now I'm wanting to say that in embroidery they call it the running stitch. Yeah. And so it's really just in and out, up and down. Up and down and in and out. And so. And when I'm doing something like this. That's a little bit. Um, a few layers that I'm going through. I just. Do one stitch at a time. Now sometimes if I'm doing something where I can. It's thinner. The fabric is thinner. I'm not going through as many layers. Then I can go like many stitches in out in out in out and then pull the needle but when i have something that's got a few layers to it then now i wouldn't have even had to do the back layer i i started with white and then i put the blue on it i could have just did the blue i didn't really need to do the white but i did put the white there just so that it would be a little bit more sturdy and once, and see, I, 
I have to start my first go round working on the flat surface and work on the flat surface but then I will take the whole thing into my lazy chair and I'm going to sit there and put my feet back up I've been doing really good about keeping my feet up and um, in fact I did one video on my phone from my chair here I've got a camera hooked to my that is connected to my um, my computer my laptop computer and um, I do it this way and then I can see myself in the computer make sure that I stay in in frame and try to make sure that not too much of my messy surroundings show and that's what I have to do and so but see I'm I'm gonna go in there this evening and I'm gonna sit in my lazy chair and I showed you this morning if you saw the little video I put up this morning I um I'm really loving my frog I look up there at that um up at that screen and I think he looks really good better on the screen than he does in person um and see if you do something like this I wouldn't have had to cut all this out for the eyes I could have just put two buttons on there or I could have put um sequins on there and you know so I could have done that after but I want to get as much as I can in that is actually underneath the the um the this what do we call that now tool under the tool i want to get as much as i can under the tool because that is the main idea of this process now and i didn't see anybody else do this i started making my needle books this way by using tool as a top on my on a lot of things and so I could use a lot of scraps of fabric and and see this is another way to use up your scraps of your fabric and um, and I just figured that out one day and I actually have looked to see if anybody uses tool as a cover as a top layer and so far I didn't find any but um I like now I've seen where some of the people that have watched me do it they've done it and like I have a pillow that Yolanda made and she did the same thing because you don't have to slow stitch this either if you wanted to use the sewing machine because that's what I did on my needle books was used the sewing machine to actually quilt it all together and so you can do that too but right now I am in the slow stitching mode I love it I love it I love it I just can't get enough of it I just will do this constantly till the cows come home and um, and I don't get much else done I will go you know what I ordered for myself you're not gonna believe this but um, I haven't got my stimulus yet, but for my, f to stimulate myself, <laughs> to get st what I wanted, you're not going to believe this. You know what I wanted? This is what was on top of my wish list. A mop bucket. I wanted a mop bucket. One of those like you see um, in the schoolhouse, you know, that it's just got, it's on wheels. And you can stick your mop in it, and then you stick your mop in the ringer part, and take this stick and go, and it rings out your mop. Well, I'm telling you what's the truth. I ordered one of them, figuring, I figuring I'm going to get my stimulus, and that's what I'm getting because I have, I can't bend over and ring out my mop. Can't do that. And I have a steam mop. I got one of them steam mops, but um. And I like that too. I do like my steam mop, and I do use that, and it really gets your floor really clean. You don't even have to use any soap. But then my house don't smell like pine salt when I'm done. 
I don't know. I'm just so used to the mop that I like using a mop. And I thought, wow, if I have a mop bucket that I can wring out the mop, that'll wring the mop out for me because I can't bend over. When, when you get old as Methuselah like me, you learn about what this stuff I'm saying about. You learn. You'll understand. Things don't bend like they used to bend. And I used to could bend, I'm telling you. I could bend. And like today, when me and Jeff were um, changing around my sewing room, I mean my craft room a little bit, and moving the table, I wanted to move the table to where two people could sit at the table at one time. Well, then I need the fan unplugged to move the fan to the other side of the room. Well, to get to the fan plug... You had to get underneath the table where we had just moved it. So I said, oh, Jeffrey, would you do me a favor? And just in like two seconds, he was able to climb under the table, unplug the fan, move the fan to the other side of the room, and plug it back in. If I would have done that, I would have gotten the floor. First of all, it would have took 10 minutes to get into the floor. Then another 10 minutes to get under the table. Then another 10 minutes to... Um, to be able to reach to the plug and then 20 minutes to get up back up off the floor and then it then I would have had to um yeah I would probably had to get a forklift to get me up off the floor but um so Jeffrey helped me he got that done in 10 seconds and so boy it's handy to have a 12 year old around when you're like really ancient yeah <laughs> I said this morning, I got this one friend, Lori, um, I I said kind of in jest this morning on my video that no, anything is not vintage unless it's older than 1948, if it's older than 1948. I mean, yeah before made before 1948 i said that because i was born in 1948 and i do not want to be vintage so i said it for that reason but then she she got some correct dates for me and made sure that i knew when the what would be vintage but then i thought well but wait a minute aren't vintage cars aren't cars kind of in a different category and sure enough you know cars don't have to be um or antique antique um yeah that's why i have to make up my new word which is vora v-o-r-a it's just plain old old is vora it means it can be vintage old retro or antique it can be any of those so it's vora and um because just because of that reason because and I'm not picking on you either Lori because um, thank you for that information you did good to search that out for me and um, but I still don't get it because it when I looked up then because then I thought well I want to look that up too and so I did and come to find out that it's different things different things that are called antique at different ages it depends on what it is but but i'm not antique so and i was born in i was built in 1948 but if you have a 1948 vehicle it's vintage antique rather it's antique and you can get an antique tag on it and i don't think you even have to pay tax on it anymore do you have to pay tax on the antique car papa I don't think so either. Do you know what year an antique car starts? I think it's 50 years. 50 years for a car? Yeah. Papa's pretty smart when it comes to all that stuff. So. Aren't you, Papa? I'm not so sure about that. No. You're not sure if you're smart? You're taught, you, you, if I say you're smart, you are smart. Because okay. I am the boss of you. I'm smart, man. Okay. You are. Yes, I'm gonna go lay down. You're gonna lay down, all right? What time Indeed. is it? It's only eight o'clock. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna read. Okay. I love you. What are you reading? My 
Stephen King, The, the Shining. Well, it's Stephen it's, King, The Shining. No, it's it's no the sequel to The Shining. Oh, the sequel to The Shining. Yeah. And it's called uh, something else. <laughs> it's called something else. Okay, The I Secret to, to the Shining, and it's called something else. Hold on up here. Yeah, you don't have to tell me. It's okay. How'd that get stuck in there? But as you can see, I'm just, see, now I'm on my second row going around. And I'm almost out of thread here, so I'll have to get some more thread. And so that, I think I will make this as my um, ending for this. My frog. Freddy the Frog, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> when I worked at Eki for, I worked at this place where I did um, screen printing for a while. It was mostly all young people that worked there, but I was kind of old. Oh, definitely not ancient. Yeah. Called Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Oh, okay. Doctor Sleep by Stephen King. And anyway, all these kids. Yeah, I was like the old grandma of the place. Well, there was some older ones, too, there. But the kids all called me Kermit. And I don't know how I got stuck with that name. But they call I mean, lovingly, them kids were awesome. And um, they all wanted to take me home. Uh, they wanted me to be their grandma. And so I wanted to be their grandma, too. But I had to stay being a grandma here. And um, But they called me Kermit. That was fun. Screen printing was fun, too. I probably would have stayed there, but I couldn't breathe them chemicals. Couldn't breathe the chemicals. So anyway, that's a start. And as I get in further, then I'll start taking the pins out as I go. But this is my frog. I think my frog's beautiful. And that, like I said, this is the one I did this morning. And I'm going to stitch this tonight to my blanket and I'm going to stitch but I got a couple a little bit more um a couple a little bit more French knots that I'm going to put in here first and then I'm going to I'm going to stitch my Lizzie in there see it's got my name right there L-I-Z-Z-I-B that's me right there and it's going to go on my quilt on my blanket it's not really a quilt it's just really a blanket Tracy made this for me. Tracy Turner, 2021. It's going to go on my blanket. But, so anyway. And I might get this whole frog done tonight, too. And then what shall I make later? I'll make something else. I'll make something else. But I love my frog. I think he turned out beautiful. Okay. Oh, I got to read. And I'm going to read in this one, You Are Stronger Than You Know Again. Um, I'm meeting this book more than anything right now is you are stronger than you know words of hope and encouragement for someone living with a chronic illness so let me just find a page let's go to this one believe in the best oh donna fargo wrote this one believe in the best possible outcome to attract healthy results use your attitude of persistence and de determination Every positive thought will signal to your immune system that you are on your own side. Hopeful and faithful statements to yourself will boost your desire and potential to believe in the best outcome you can imagine. If doubts start to gain up on you, stand up to them. Divert your attention to focus on the most empowering conclusion possible. See yourself with restored energy and pain-free days. And like I said, Donna Fargo wrote that. And when I read this one before, the rainbows, I love the rainbows, and I felt like, ah, oh, the rainbows need a unicorn, so I put that unicorn sticker in there. Because rain that rainbow, it's a double rainbow. It needed them, that unicorn in there. Okay, so I ask God to watch over you all every step you take, every move you make. And I will see you happy and healthy on the next video. God bless you all, and have a good night.